Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to say hello a load of times. I don't know if we're live yet. So, are we live? Let me know in the comments. Right, quick look at the early chat. We have Alicia in the house. Hello there. Um, she missed us last week. <laughs> Good to see you. And Carol's in the house. Um, yeah, Alicia's been busy day with the makers, ready to relax and enjoy the chat. Awesome. Ma making felty day corns. What fun. Um, Carol's just watched Steffi and bought it all. Awesome. Um, today, no kids, nothing. I just wanted to... A tutorial possibly to just share a little something with you guys and that is how I needle felt and even draw eyes because that is the first thing even when I'm doing my tiny little sketches of dogs when I'm doing digital drawings of dogs people always comment first on the eyes and I'll be honest if you can get the eyes right then the rest of the drawing is less important. You could pretty much just do line work or something a little sketchy. If you've got the eyes and the nose of a pet right, then it just looks so much better, so good, because the eyes are what draws your eyes, uh, basically. So that I just wanted to show you the little tips and tricks to take. We all know how to draw an eye. You draw an eye shape, put in an iris and a pupil, Bob's your uncle. I just want to show you the little hacks that hopefully, we're doing it live so it might go wrong, but that hopefully take an eye from amazing, well, from awful to amazing. And this works if you're doing kind of like 2D drawings. You'll have seen in my thumbnail, I haven't got the pictures just now because I'm on a different computer, but you've seen in my thumbnail and some past videos I've done. If you search for Pam Duffy Needle Felted Tiger or Snow Leopard, I've done videos of 2D felting with them and you'll see, you can actually see me build up the eyes. But also if you're doing 3D sculptures, you can use these kind of tips and techniques if you wanted to felt an eye on. And in any drawing or digital drawing, just use these little little tips and it just improves your eye ever so slightly. Uh, that's my thinking anyway. Um, so Faith's in the house. Hello there. Carol's saying I'm coming over loud and clear. Awesome. Um, <laughs> Faith showing off your eyes today. Yeah, well, I thought I better have an effort at that. Do something a little bit more special. And as Alicia's saying, I have new magnetic eyelashes. Um, come on, how do these things work? I should have actually brought the box through. Um, I'm not going to fetch it just now. But you just draw on your eyeliner and the act eyelashes in the little band have tiny little magnets so you just kind of hold them up close to your eyes and wherever you drew the line they just go and attach to your face and they stick on really pretty good they're kind of stuck there so that's okay i'm practicing with them i just bought some really cheap ones so i had a set on like two days ago and they lasted all day i went dog walking in them in the wind and rain um i had a nap on the sofa they do seem um not a hundred percent like they're cheaper so a couple of the magnets fell off of one of them so this is me on my second set now um which i usually sorry makeup tutorials anyway but i usually trim my eyelashes and only put on like two thirds of my eye but i ran i did all my makeup and then i was like oh these lashes are broken i'm going to need to do new ones so i usually trim them but i didn't have any scissors so i've just put the full lash on which is weird having lash so close to your eye but they actually i use fake lashes a bit when i'm i go out like about once a month and i haven't been out so now you guys get all my get all my going outness but i use fake lashes about once a month and what i find if anyone else uses them i have quite sensitive eyes so i put the eyelash glue on and when i stick them on my eyes it's like irritated and horrible for a little while and then I get used to it but these just feel like normal straight away and the other thing is sorry about the planes going overhead how rude the other thing I find because eyelash glue is like latex it's glue I have a lot of allergies so you're going to find all the pollen and everything sticks to the glue and so the next few days my eyes are really bad so with these it's there's little bits i believe it's like little bits of iron in these you know tiny micro micro magnetic well micro metallic particles 
um, which are staying put. They're not getting in my eye, thankfully, but they're not sticky. So, so far, after Friday wearing the lashes all day, there's been no effect. So fingers crossed. If that saves me even having to wear mascara, because pollen sticks to mascara, so they might be a thing. We'll see. Um, sorry about the complete detour into eyes. Um, kiss my stained glass. Hello there. Awesome name. Um, Carol, magnetic lashes sounds a better idea than glue. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Right, I just want to... Let's, let's see if I can actually do this, but just pull up... We are talking eyes today, and I just wanted to show you all um, something like what I'm talking about is... Go away me. Um, I've been doing lots of digital drawings, and hopefully, if this shows up okay, I can't check what you're seeing, so <laughs> hopefully this does look good. Hopefully you can see one of my digital drawings. The focus should be on the eye. Um, so you're always wanting to make the eye a little bit, be little bit better. It draws the eye there, and then you put all the detail around the eye. And as you can see, if you actually pull your eyes away, like his chest, the detail there is terrible. It looks rubbish, but you don't notice it so much because your focus is on the eye. And it's just a few simple tricks to make an eye go from just like a kiddie sketch of an eye to something actually, hopefully, better. Um, so that's. That's one of my latest drawings. Go away, pop up. That's one of my latest drawings using all the tips and tricks that I use to make an eye. So that's what I want to show you, hopefully, with a bit of needle felting. Let's come back to me so I can sort out my screens again. Uh, yeah, hopefully. Oh, drat, that showed like the eye was right over my face. I'm now seeing that. So, right, I'm going to try that again. <laughs> oh gotta love the internet don't you right so if i move him way over there and try this again now can you see him hopefully yeah hopefully that shows up much better you're gonna see my wee dog and hopefully see the eye so you can see what i was waffling on about that is a total pain um i need a second screen <laughs> on my laptop to be able to see what i'm showing you guys while showing it at the same time anyway this is my little dog um i tried to do extra special with his eyeball because you may have noticed poor little ludo this is the dog's name he was my friend's dog i've actually met him in real life he is adorably friendly like climb on your chest friendly type dog um but he was rejected by his mum and um she accidentally uh yeah um made him lose an eye so he's he's a little one-eyed guy um so i wanted to make his his actual eye there extra special because he's only got the one but he's a lovely dog and you wouldn't notice it he absolutely adores life and is a really cool dog yes hopefully you actually saw him there that time oh, don't you love technology isn't it great <laughs> yeah so hopefully that works better um and yeah, sorry guys, I'm seeing that you were saying in the chat, the picture is too far to the right of the screen and the eyes under me. Yeah, sorry about that. So <laughs> I got it sorted second time round. The choice of modern technology, eh? Right, so this I'm kind of nervous if this is going to work. I, I hope it will, but I've never done anything like this live. This is not me following a kit. This is trying to show you the things. So let's go down. And I just have a little bit of black that I've made as a base. I probably should in white. It probably show up better. But I've just felted some black on. I'm using a plastic foam pad. See, there's a lot of great eco ones out there that I'm now using. But I have, from many kits, I have leftover plastic pads. So I'm using, well, foam of plastic so i'm using them up because it's better if you've already got stuff to use it if we've got enough light on this it's better if you've got stuff to to use it at least before you get rid of it before you find ways to recycle it because it's already been created okay this is where i'm super nervous the first thing i'm going to do is with a little white i'm going to attempt to to draw the shape of an eye. We'll try and make it pretty big so everybody can see it. And hopefully I'll be able to show you the mistakes first of all, and then we'll go into how to fix them. This is the plan, but everybody knows what a kind of 
eye shape is it, it's eye shaped with most of us have one on our face to go by and um well i generally do animals so this will probably be more dog um at the end of the day but just now it's just a generic eye we're going to do all the things wrong first and then we're going to fix them so a nice big eye um hopefully we all know roughly the structure of an eye because it's something we've we've had for a while and we all look at them so in your eye you have the whites of the eye you have your iris and then you have the pupil so these are the features that we're going to put in the eye first of all so i'm just put the multi-tool felt away here that is so loud sorry about that super loud and as I say, you can do this on a 3D piece, you can do it when you're drawing, you can do it anything and it'll hopefully help you. But if you're flat felting, remember, lift and replace so it don't get stuck. How noisy is that? <laughs> there we go, good enough to start with. Right, now most most dogs and most people not me actually but most dogs and most people and things have a brown eye so we'll go with brown i've got this cocoa color this chocolate color can't remember where i got it from now if you see comment below at any point if you're seeing what mistakes i'm making and what you would do different already but i'm just gonna go ahead and put in the iris as I say, I'm trying to do all the bad things first and then I'll come back and make it hopefully better. Oh, I so hope this works. <laughs> Else I'm just going to sound like a complete idiot. But anyway. And this is not... I obviously wouldn't start off doing it bad and then fixing it. But this is hopefully a good good way to demonstrate, give you an idea. So... So we have the white of the eye and we have the iris. And you've got to try and keep your edges kind of neat because they're really going to show up if you don't. But probably could do with more white of the eye, but we'll go with what we've got here. And then the pupil, we said. <laughs> Um, so we have an eye um how well can oh goes dark when i do that don't we have an eye obviously the contrast between the pupil in the dark brown is difficult to see, but I hope you guys can light. <laughs> I hope you guys can kind of see that. Uh, but yeah, let me know. I've got touch activated lights, so each time I try and move them, can I? Is that better? That's probably worse. Let's let's shut that over. Right. I don't know if you guys can see that, but let me know in the comments what you think I can do to improve this. This is this is a start. It's an eye. It's got all the features of an eye, but what's wrong with it? It's it's not right. That's clearly that's nothing like what me me poor Ludo's eye was like. It's a bit it's a bit wrong. There's stuff wrong with it. So I'll give you a minute to tell me in chat what you feel is wrong with it, and then we'll get on and hopefully fix it up. Um, Alicia, it seems some really cool furnitures and settings made from these foam things um people are using them for their needle felt makes wish i could remember the names yeah really good point you can carve these up and then cover them in stuff to make furniture i might actually do that that's such a good idea and then yeah you could have like sofas and stuff and then you're not throwing out this foam so super good idea there um <laughs> alicia yes one giant eye <laughs> it completely is uh, it's yeah i don't usually make them this size um 
even even my, well when i'm doing them um, digital art it's great you can zoom right in and get all these kind of details but in in real life my sculptures are not even yeah that's about the size of an entirety of one of my sculptures i don't know if i've got any with a felted eye oh well only lord squiffy but he's got a cartoony felty eye i am um, so carol has carol said probably wouldn't want to see the whole of the iris absolutely i'm good at that okay this is a cringe thing but we'll do this anyway yeah so if we look at an actual human eye we can see that my eyelids tend to cover the top of my iris no matter you can see like if i look up you can see a little bit but to see the whole of the eye i would have to be this is a startled look this this is not a good look so that's unrealistic unless you were going for a startled look um so absolutely the first thing we're going to want to do is bung a bit of eyelid over this cover up the very top of the eye with a bit of eyelid that makes it a little bit more natural and a little bit less startled and freaky hopefully probably a little bit too much at the bottom there as well but yeah we're making making an eyelid and adding if you're doing this 3d adding an eyelid over and leaving the texture will totally work but just now we're doing this 2d so we don't get to use the tricks of having extra texture from adding something so we now have an eyelid and the other thing to be perfectly honest the pupil was a little bit too much spot in the center again so i want to kind of have that cut off a little bit more by the eyelid so it's more of a semicircle there we go so already you will be able to see this more in a little bit because i'm going to add more things but there we go already remember cut off a bit of the top of the eye especially it's much more appealing in pets in general because you see your dog or your cat they're littler than you and they're often looking up at you rather than like looking at you dead straight on is a little bit predatory <laughs> um, it can be cute but looking up is kind of a little bit more appealing so there we have hopefully already improved this a little tiny bit um alicia says uh, the one in the drawing had a far bigger pupil yep hopefully we've i don't want to bigger it too much because i want to leave room for everything well actually no you're right we'll go far bigger pupil I, i'm doing what i'm told this is cool <laughs> so far bigger pupil and what we're going to do because cats and dogs tend to have far less of the whites of their eye showing now if it was a human possibly not so much but another right another trick it, it's it's a known thing um if you're supposedly like super in love with someone or attracted to them or um large you know children or something or if you're in a dark place you tend to have larger pupils it's considered more appealing that's why um hundreds of years ago women used to blind themselves um putting was it foxglove or whatever we called it belladonna the 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 extract from a plant which dilates the pupil because it just makes you look a little bit more attractive so having a bigger pupil is more appealing and with a dog they tend to have much more of the iris than the white of the eye so we've got a little bit more going on there so there's tip one cover a bit cover a bit at the top do both if you want the squinty but cover a bit at the top tip two much bigger pupil is much more appealing um <laughs> canvas Sor saran has nothing on your needle felting i know hopefully it's going to look a little less creepy <laughs> and a little more appealing we're working on it we're doing it together um but yeah already it's looking a little bit gooder 
I hope. Um, and Alicia and the other one said, Alicia had another point, quite rightedly, that there was a little sparkle of white spots like a reflection. Super important. Your eyes are wet, hopefully, um, and that reflects a little bit of light. It depends. Now, you've got to think, where's the light coming from? I generally do a, a light source to the top left hand side as I'm looking at something. It's just habit for me. So a tiny little dot of light brings your items to life so much. Um, if you're felting them on a creature again, this makes such a difference. You can already see this is so much more appealing. But we can make it better. Now, in the Ludo picture, he even had two points of light. You can have, um, I used to always do in the 80s when I was in art class and doing cartoons, where my teacher told me I wasn't allowed to do cartoons. Um, that's not a viable art form. Yeah, horrible teacher. Um, but I used to always do um, a square with lines through it to look like the light was coming from a window. But there we go. So not just one source of light. Not just one bit of light, but an extra little bit. That just looks even more interesting. I've no idea how that's actually working in real life. That's probably coming from two lights. So it's like a studio light or something. But it just, that's a bit different, isn't it? That's a bit of a wow. Yeah. Scully, hello there, how are you doing? Good to see you. Um, <laughs> Alicia, I'm, I'm looking at myself on the phone, but you can't really look at your own eye with the camera and the photo at the same time. It's so funny. <laughs> it's so lit. I love that. You're trying to you, you look at your own eyeball. Yeah, you're going to have to take a picture of yourself to look at your own eyeball on the phone. Um, yeah, that would be a whole lot easier. Um, but yeah, look, just from a couple of your suggestions, I think we've gone from kind of rubbishy, startled, freaky eye to something a whole lot more appealing. But we've got some more levels. We can take this up. So any more suggestions, people? Um, and Alicia's saying don't listen to me. I did, look, you two two people's suggestions. I just followed them and we've we've got this far. Um, I've got a little bit of brown sneaking into the the white of the eye, but we'll live with that just now. This is just a quick demonstration. Um, let's see what else. Um, I kiss my stained glass. Lovely tips. Yeah, I'd like, like to point out, I'm not actually a trained artist. I did sort of GCSE, but I didn't get on with the art teacher because she told me uh, cartoons weren't a viable form of art so I went off and sulked in the pottery room for most of my art classes um, so it's awesome hearing from other people this is just my what I've learnt um, so it's cool to hear from the rest of you um, but kiss my stained glass if you look at a portrait that's looking straight ahead they will follow you around the room but if your subject is looking down and you lay on the floor the portrait will not spooky <laughs> now I want to try that <laughs> Scully saying kiss my stained glass. It's one of the best channel names. I completely agree. Um, <laughs> Alicia said I looked away and now it's amazing. I think, and right, how much work have I done on changing this? What what is different from the original one, which was terrible? Very little. Those points of light. Even if you're doing a tiny sculpture, those points of light make all the difference. Even if you're basically just felting some animals, that their eyes are so dark it just looks like a black. I think the giraffes I did just looks like you've got a black circle. Put at least one of those spots of light in and you've got something amazing. Now, I'll check the rest of your comments in a minute. But the things now, there's a couple more things that will just make this up to the next level, I hope. And they are... Now we've said the eyes wet, but there's a couple more things. Firstly, the eyes circular. So we've got to think of our shadows in relation to that. Um, and also talking of shadows, the, the eyes further back. So your eyelids and everything are over your eyes. So we've got to think of shadows. And also the eye is kind of 
there's a little translucent bit to the iris so light plays funny there now i'm not going to go into all the the lines in the iris that's a little tricky to do with needle felting but there's just two more well no we've got three more things we're going to do to hopefully bring this a bit more to light but let's see what you guys are talking up um Bridget saying it looks beautiful like a real eye with the iris and the light. Yeah, th that's it. Two little two little things really help. Um, Lisa, great idea with adding more than one source of light. Eyeshadow, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hope you mean, like, I'm not putting eyeshadow on the dog, but shadows on the eye, yes. Light and dark makes all the difference. Um... Scully, I've been playing around with eyes in short form content. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll have to get in and check your channel again. I've not had a look for a wee while, but everyone go out and check. We have so many wonderful creative people here pop into pop into the, these videos, which is so cool. So go over and check them out. There's so much to learn and it's great fun. Um, and Carol, we'll all be off to the gallery and lying on the floor. Might get some funny looks. <laughs> I get funny looks anywhere. Um, Canvas, never let anyone tell you you're doing your art wrong. These people are not your friends. Totally agree. It's kind of a bit different if you're at school, though. <laughs> you can't say to your teacher, you're not my friend. Um, <laughs> Alicia, let's all head to the Victoria now, but meet up for a lie down. <laughs> that looks, that sounds cool. Uh, Susie, thank you so much. That looks amazing, Pam. Oh, thank you. We are, we're not finished yet. I've got... I've got time to mess this up for sure. Um, Canvas, I had an art teacher that would yell at me for making trees upside down and tell me how wrong that was. <laughs> upside down trees sound cool. Um, Rosani, hello there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Again, Rosani, another creative person if you haven't checked. Uh, Rosani, you can put the links up if you want. I totally forgot to put them, but Rosani's doing a pumpkin challenge. Oh, we might do pumpkins next week. There's an idea. But Rosani's doing a pumpkin challenge if anyone wants to join in and make some fun, funky pumpkin face, fa faces. So pop over to Rosanne's channel. Um canvas was drawing trees that were super skinny on the bottom and big fat branches oh in, impossible trees hey um i think tim burton was told off for his drawing style being impossible as well and yeah look at him go i'm sure he's doing better than whatever your art teacher's doing right so I'm going to do a couple of quick things. I want some shading. We talked about these being real, <laughs> real round shapes. We need some shading. So some of the easiest ways to get some shading is I want some shading in the whites of the eye. I'm just going to take white. I don't know how much I'm going to need here. I'm just going to add a little bit of black and blend them together just like this. That's probably too much. But you just need a tiny bit if you're doing any kind of 2d work or 3d work just a tiny bit of the color that you're working with add depend depending on what you're working on because the background in this is is black then i think adding a little bit of black to this is perfectly fine um actual artists know about adding other colors to shadows um but this this will do for what we want and we're just going to get obviously i was going to say we're going to get a darker color of white obviously if you add black to white then you're going to get gray um blue slightly more cool tones blues would work for shadows sometimes um all sorts of things but i'm going simple because i don't know that much about <laughs> color theories and everything but we just blend up our slightly darker color now we said the lights come in from here and the eyelids here so we're going to get a bit of shadow here and a little bit of a little bit more shadow here so let's try and do that and it's only very subtle but hopefully shows up on the camera And we're starting to give dimension to the eye. Um, 
and I want to do the same with my brown so we're going to take a bit of brown I have a darker brown here but I just don't quite like the color so I'm only going to take a bit of that and then a little bit of black that I've got lying around I'm going to need some more of this right you'll see what I'm going to do with this in a second but I want to make mix up more of a dark brown color for this um, let's see the chat um. <laughs> oh Susie and Scully are always bumping into each other in ch in chat I love this there's some people like every every live stream you go on it's like a little community of people who just love live streams and I totally love that and it's cool and you love so much learn so much with live streams but also it's just different isn't it it's it's not a it's not a video with all the edits and stuff it's it feels a bit more real I love them um <laughs> You're most welcome, Rosani. Um, no, I pre Rosani has been been with us, been a supporter and help and friend for quite a while now, and I totally appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's really cool, and she's also a YouTuber as well. Um, Scully, continual white showing under a person's eye signifies psychosis. Ooh. <laughs> Um, Susie, this looks relaxing to do. <laughs> I bet the felt feels fun to pull apart. It does. It's a funny thing. Yeah, you you're not. I'm not tearing it. I'm just really gently pulling and restacking because the fibres sort of pull across each other. Anyone who's doing this, you don't want to force it or rush at it. It's just. It, it. It's really relaxing. I really like needle felting for that. Okay, so as you've probably guessed, I'm gonna. There's no point darkening up the black because black is black. You could <laughs> you could do lighter colours and stuff, but I prefer if it's proper black, then it just looks a bit better, in my opinion. It looks more liquid and dark. Right, I don't think that's dark enough. More black. More black, please. I want this to really show up as a contrast. And again, I'm just going to do a few different colours here. You can do all sorts of blending and shading depending on how big or little your sculpture is. Again, if this is 3D, you're not going to have to do the shading because the magic, <laughs> the, the way the light works, the shading will happen. But definitely do the highlights. They make such a difference. Um, <laughs> Scully, you're freaking me out. I have to look at my eyes again. <laughs> You checking checking out if you if you're in psychosis or if you're a psycho. <laughs> um, and everyone needs to check out Rosani's video when you get a chance to. Um, Alicia said it's so fun. Oh, Pam's helped me become addicted to needle felting. Oh, thank you so much. I'm I'm glad to spread the addiction. Um, Scully droopy leg droopy legs. <laughs> can't speak droopy lids um signifies extreme stress yeah lots of different things um that the eyes can show you a whole lot um i do a lot of dog behavior work and you really want to look look at the eyes of the dogs and that can tell you a lot and um, one thing what we call whale eye is where you're seeing a lot of the white of the eye and that could be like if the dog's looking its nose is one way but its eyes are over there you see a lot of white that is not just stress that's like this dog is telling you i'm really not happy and there may be a bite coming because they're kind of frozen in one position but their eyes are saying totally not happy and the same if they're fixed and hard and kind of staring at you sorry for the head in the screen that's completely that's not good that's a harsh that that's a back off kind of look whereas if they're soft and kind of moving and a bit fun then you know totally different feeling there right let's but yes the eyes tell you so much well, let's see if this is dark enough i really should have brought different colors oh no but i think that's is that showing up on camera probably not i promise you the next bits will show up on camera um but a little even even if you can barely see the shading, sometimes it actually is really good. It just tricks the eyes. But anyway, we've done a little bit of shading to give the eyelids some depth. 
while we're talking on eyelids actually the lower eyelid if well it's not just a dog on people on on everything the lower eyelid i'm just going to add some more black around here to neaten this up a bit as well but your waterline on your eyelid tends to be a little more wet than the rest of your skin as well so what we're going to do is just i randomly have is that even white probably not <laughs> no i've got actual white here i've just got a tiny bit of white fleece and i'm just going to take off a little twist so i've got a thin thread and i'm just going to put that a little way under the eye trying to keep it neat and tidy and this just gives the impression of your eyelid reflecting a bit of the light again thinking where the light's coming from here uh, difficult in felting because as I felt this it's kind of disappearing into the black a bit but that gives you the impression of the eyelid and the same is just right into the tear duct which side's the <laughs> which which side just now is going to be the tear duct I think it's going to be this side now I'd meant it to be that side but so we'll curve that in slightly a little bit of white just to reflect off your tear duct area as well so from the light coming in it's just reflecting a tiny bit underneath the eye so hopefully that's starting starting to look a bit more like something um Oh, Rosani's agreeing, playing with needle felting and fibre is so soothing. It is indeed, it's really cool. Um, canvas looks more like an anime eye. I fully expect it to get into an over-dramatic sword fight that holds insults in Japanese. Absolutely. Yeah, well, like I said, I did far more cartoon stuff than I did anything else when I was growing up and learning how to do this. And some of the styles in the, the Japanese cartoon stuff is amazing okay yeah um, I said I was going to do another thing now your eyes tend to be kind of lighter towards the center and darker around the edge of your iris so I don't know if this is going to work I would prefer just to have a, a thread of a darker color to be able to do this but I'm going to use this color that I did and make around the iris just a little bit darker again this might the camera might not pick this up so well but it's going to pick up the last the final bits well hopefully so around we go darkening up this it's getting there um chat's flying i'm loving this i'm missing bits of chat um oh scully it looks so lifelike the eye you're making thank you so much i hope everyone can see how it's super easy i'm not a very good artist i'm not great at drawing and stuff but it's the, just the like the tiny little tricks attention to detail and to be honest as I say I'm not great so there'll be times when I'm drawing a picture of a dog and I can't necessarily see a whole deal about what's going on in their eye so I revert back to these little tricks just to make it a little more real even though I can't necessarily see these bits if that makes sense um so so yeah these these are my cheats I'm sharing with you guys <laughs> um Tobias, um, so timely. I've been needle felting 3D for a decade and just about to embark on 2D. Fantastic. Right, you totally have to share. I, fa I, I should do more 2D. I'd been felting 3D for absolutely ages as well and then made a dip into 2D and I found it so cool. It's a lot of the skills that you already have 
are great for that but it also helps like i can now on my 3d items make better eyes because i've got this trick if i need to needle felt an eye i use glass eyes quite a lot more but yeah um we are nearly done there's only one more trick that will hopefully bring this really to life um and i will show you and that is the way your eye is now remember this isn't actually black in your eye this is a hole and so when the light hits there it's reflecting well you've got a lens and everything but behind that so the light is reflecting back as it hits there but it's also going through here and freakily enough coming out in the in your iris as well so opposite where your light source is this is like the little trick that blew me away <laughs> into your eye just a little shape of something lighter into the center of this iris this is such a <laughs> a wooly color that i've got here it is difficult working with the different colors but again i do this when i'm working in pen or digital art i do the exact same thing here as well and then you can even if you've got an even lighter color i'm going to go super fine needle now this you would go you don't want to put yellow in a brown eye that's ridiculous but just a tiny bit more into this very center opposite thinking where the light comes through and just a little pop of yellow and suddenly <laughs> how's that and you can imagine like if you're drawing or something that takes four seconds to put in same with the felting that was not a big deal i'm switching about needles all the time um but yeah hopefully that shows you for just tiny bits we've gone from a startled rubbish looking eye to hopefully something that looks wet and light you know circular and yeah just a little bit gorgeous so relieved that kind of worked um yeah but hopefully you can you can see a bit of what's going on unfortunately the brown is kind of lost because the camera is not quite picking it it's a bit too dark for the camera i really should not have done a black background but it's yeah giving you a really cool idea and i will take a picture and put of this properly with the proper camera that works and put it up um, but yeah, I'm just going to smooth this over, get back into the chat, um, and then I'll show you this on the, hopefully the big camera will show it a little bit better. I say the big camera. They're exactly the same camera. They're both two webcams, but that one's just better um, for some reason. I say for, for some reason, because that one's plugged directly into the USB and that one's plugged in, that one's plugged into a splitter. Um... Scully, yeah, I feel as an artist, painting humans or animals, the topic of body language becomes important. It does indeed. You've got to know what you're portraying. You know, um, how much can the eyes be closed before it starts to look a bit menacing? What, wh where are they looking? What does that mean? And yeah, like your big, your big pupils looking a bit more in love <laughs> or you know what, what what are you trying to say so yeah especially if you're drawing animals like this i've lost a little bit of the iris of the white of the eye there i just want to get that back if you're drawing animals and but if you're doing custom work nine times out of ten people give you an awful picture to copy i've i've got that just now like I've been sent some pictures of people's dogs to make and I can't even tell what breed the dog it is. I can't tell anything about the dog. The picture is terrible. So you have to use your common sense a little bit as well and your little, you know, your little tricks, tips and tricks just to make it a little bit better. And then that I was going to add more white in there. No, that's my shading that I just spoke about. Um, so if you use these tips and tricks, if you can't see what the eye really looks like, if you know it's a brown eye, you can do, obviously, different colours, do the same thing. Just these little tricks and they're going to love it, even if that's not what you could see from the picture. 
am oh, Scully's going all scientific, loving it. Um, and my chat keeps drunk the bear. My chat keeps jumping. Sorry. Um, where did Jack go? Right, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to find it. Like jumped, and then I see that you guys have been talking forever, which is awesome. Um, right, and now I've gone too far. Um, yeah, Scully's getting all scientific, loving it, talking about um, Da Vinci's Vitruvian man. I can't even say it properly, but I know exactly the picture you mean he does all the science the proportions and everything and that's what i love for those of you that don't know my my actual training is in science rather than actual art um i i trained to be a chemical engineer rather than carry on at art i just did that up to like when i was 16 one of my subjects was art and like two of them was science so yeah, I I don't I don't know much about art, but I ended up being an artist. Pamela, hello there. Um, chat is challenging on my phone, lurking and drawing tips. Yeah, I've heard that from a lot of people. I don't tend to watch on my phone because I can't figure out how to do all the good stuff. But yeah, I appreciate everyone who's watching on the phone and can't drop by and say hello. Totally appreciate that. Um, I'm going to keep fiddling at this for ages and I when it's actually done right put put the thingies down come to the full face right let's see does that show oh yeah that's so much better okay so this is what we've been making um, I hope the little tips help you give you some idea I'm just going to check the chat finish the chat um, if you have any more what else can I add to this obviously eyelashes but they're not going to show up <laughs> They're not going to show up in the black on black, but I'm actually so relieved that this worked. <laughs> it actually looks way better than than I'd hoped, but I hope I hope I gave you all the tips and tricks to kind of show you what you can do to make an to make a eye go from like really like what a kid would draw to something that hopefully an adult would draw. Um. Alicia is saying she's done a f talent by she's done a few 2D as well. Um, th the first was the butterfly with Pam, and you've done some landscapes. Yeah, the Maker's Butterfly Kit, which you can see the butterfly in the background. Sorry if I'm shrieking into the microphone. <laughs> Professional YouTuber, me. Um, yeah, the butterfly kit was awesome. Really good way to get started having everything printed if you check my channel i've done some 2d painting as i say the tiger I did a cheetah was my first ever one a uh, snow leopard which oh, turned out so good but all them spots um and then i tried some faces and i was so happy it's coming up for halloween so a good time to check out my wednesday adams I'm not going to claim any skill there. I don't know how on earth the nose worked. That was just Bob Ross' happy accident for sure. Um, but yeah, that I am still super proud and amazed that that one worked. Um, and what I did, if you like, I loved the makers so it was printed onto the fabric for you, so you were sort of a felting by numbers. Um, but I got a silky iron-on transfer pen, and what you do is you either have your own artwork or something you've printed out from the internet and just trace it with this pen you're gonna have to flip it over if you want it the right way around you trace it with this pen and then you put it on your fabric and iron it and it melts the pen off onto your fabric so you've got all the line work there and it's so easy for years i was looking at people's 2d work and going wow how do they get the proportions so well as well 90 percent of them are cheating <laughs> what i would call cheating but apparently that's how we're allowed to do art now so i'm totally happy with it <laughs> and there there's still a whole lot the, see the tip, tips i've shown you there with the blending with just a small amount of the color you're using and just blending into a darker color same with the white to do a lighter color that's the difference between you just coloring things in and it looking flat and just getting a bit of dimension think where your light's coming from throw in a couple of highlights throw in a couple of shades you've got something great um 
I'm going off topic and <laughs> um and hi Alicia. <laughs> Scully, the masters have sacred ge geometry interwoven into their work. It reflects life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is worth looking. At, I mean, I know some of the theory, but I do have to have to do more. But yeah, it it really really helps to understand all of that. Um, kiss me stained glass. Yeah, just that strand makes look three dimensional from two dimensional. Thank you so much. And yeah, that's it. It's kind of the good thing and the bad thing is just a teeny little touch of something else. And with the fibres, with felting, it's really good for that because the different colours can really pop and stand out more. But just a tiny bit can make or break something for sure. Um, and yep, yeah, Scully, a lot of the, uh, well, the supermodels have the, the golden ratios in their in their figures and everything. Susie, yeah, got to run. Thank you for stopping by. Just wanted to say hi to, to Pam and Scully. Good to see you. Um, I hope you have a great day. Uh, Rosani, it's harder for me to do detail, to detail the eyes in smaller pieces. I get carried away and forget to paint the eyes ahead of time. Yeah, um, it, well, you've seen the size I work to most of the time and let, let's get back up there and you've just got to look at what you can add if you're just doing a flat eye you think when I was going through all of this just make sure the pupil's an appealing size look at what you're doing with the eyelid and add that drop or those two two drops of light that makes a huge difference the rest of it just whatever other detail you can fit but I mean, even on a tiny, tiny little brushes, you can add just a tiny splodge, makes a huge difference. Um, hey, Scrap and Palette Man, we have another awesome YouTuber joining us. Um, if you haven't seen him, Scrap and Palette Man is our is our wombo. He takes he takes other people's rubbish and turns it into treasure, which is great. Um, Awesome two camera live stream. <laughs> Thank you so much. Took a while to set up, but yes, I'm getting I'm getting all funky with stuff. Um, don't even ask how many USB splittery things are happening on this poor little laptop, but it's coping. Um, Scully, I hope you didn't take the white out under the dog's eye on my account. <laughs> I just know that about humans. No, no, no. Um. You don't want too much, but if you're looking up, you can see a tiny bit. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't take anything out. It's just the way it went. Um, but yeah, dogs and cats' eyes tend to have more iris than they do white of the eye. Um, and Alicia, oh, it looks great. Thank you so much. Um, Carol looks amazing. Thank you, guys. You're so kind. Thank you. I'm just so pleased it worked. <laughs> Going live and I hadn't planned anything. I was just winging it because I draw a lot of dog's eyes when I have commissions and stuff. I'd so yeah. <laughs> Uh, Faith, uh, love this. Thank you so much. I watched your pa um, painting eyes onto the back of cabochons the other day, but this is much better. Yeah, that was just something else I wanted to try. I had good fun with that. Sometimes glass eyes are better. Sometimes felted eyes are kind of awesome too. And it's good to have the ability to do both in your repertoire. And certainly if you're doing 2D painted, I think the painted cabochons were some of my cat's heads and that was literally just I wanted some glass eyes but I couldn't couldn't find any in the size I wanted so I painted them but but yes um Susie yeah I can't believe how it made it pop I know just a tiny tiny little thing um <laughs> Rosani that I would look awesome on a large purple peng pe penguin large purple pumpkin oh purple pumpkins there's an idea. I don't think I'm going to felt a pumpkin large enough for for this this eyeball because even with cartoony perspective, that would be bigger than my head, and I don't think I have enough purple to go bigger than my head. And you'll know me. I prefer prefer doing things little, but to show the detail on camera. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, t 
stop jumping chat. Olivia's hello there. Um thank you so much. The eye is amazing. Thank you. That's so nice of you. Uh, Scully looks so pretty. Thank you. I just I, I hopefully just wanted to show how it it doesn't take much. Like I was talking away and messing about, but can you imagine if you were drawing that? That's quite like right, let's think. From the the ridiculously round thing, I added an eyelid, I did a little bit of shading, two pops of white, two pops of white, a little bit of white under the eye, darkened up the under, which you can't, ex it shows better in other coloured eyes, um, and then this little bit of shading. So it's like five or six extra lines. You know, if you're doing that with oil paint, that would be like five flicks of the brush, pretty much. Um, again, with um, digital artwork, so easy you just make like a handful of extra shapes i was going to try and actually show you digitally but i think i would blow up my laptop trying to run a drawing tablet at the same time as streams and you know cameras and everything um alicia oh thank you it was so informative that's so nice of you um Rosani, but you've done it nicely with your illustrations and 3D projects. Subconsciously, you improve without realizing it. That's it. the more you mess around with different things and practice different things. I think, like I say, doing the 2D painting, it's not something I've ever sold any of my 2D work, you know, my needle felted paintings. Um, but it really helped me like give me some ideas for okay if I'm doing 3D but I was doing a black horse I would perhaps think of doing some shading and stuff on the coat of the horse it, to give our felt the feeling of the sheen and everything oh Pamela you got bounced off the phone um, stop jumping chat yum I kiss my stained glass have I ever tried any teaching platforms that pay you for the teaching craft skills i haven't i've thought about all these things i'm actually going to do a video about this at a later date firstly there there's the whole imposter syndrome like i'm not trained i suppose i'm a professional artist because i do sell my art but i feel there's so much people with better experience and also there's the kind of thing now it's it's deliberate because I would get bored just doing the one thing but I don't make my entire living out of selling art so I feel quite a lot of people sort of take offense at that it's like you're not making six figures from your art so who are you to tell us how to do this kind of thing um and also I actually I I like doing the YouTube videos for free I know it annoys a lot of people um in a lot of subjects they they prefer the idea you build up an audience and then you start selling courses but i don't want to do that i want to build up the youtube so that you guys can all watch everything for free and it's all there and hopefully some of it does well and will keep bringing in views and money in the future i mean of course youtube could shut down and if that happens then i would maybe think about some kind of paid platform i had i'd looked into like skillshare and everything but yeah i i have no qualifications <laughs> um but yeah it's it's fun it's fun to do this and i think as well that's the thing i've got so many ideas for little tutorials like this for the tips and stuff that i've learned but i don't have to do it i can also say it and i love it doing like the, the makers craft box and learning from them i don't have to pretend to be an expert at this i'm learning from everybody else all the time too so this is more fun <laughs> and again yeah it's something else i'm thinking of making a video about so you'll get a tiny bit of the rant here is i found oddly enough so many people especially doing youtube all the advice is how to build the audience to make money out of them how to chase money and not saying I didn't need money. <laughs> I until about a, a year or so ago, I was super needing money. I'm doing okay now. I'm not rich, but <laughs> I'm get I'm I'm happy. Um, but I just didn't want to be constantly pushing for money. I tried some of the things. People said do a Patreon, do this, do that, 
And I just figured out not pushing for money worked better for me when people looked to do paid interviews with me. I didn't even talk to them about money. Um, the, the same, like with, with the makers. A lot of people that I know that are doing YouTube were significantly smaller than me and people, like companies, they were, they were contacting them like, how much will you pay for me to do a video on you? I was like, well, no, I... I'd like to support a small business that's doing well. The makers don't pay me, so if something's rubbish, I can say it's rubbish, but I can have fun and we build a relationship and we will help each other. And I much prefer that. I don't I don't want to get paid for things <laughs> things like that. I I prefer I prefer to be just like honest about it. And if someone sends me something for free like we had last week, um the owl Oh, he's tiny. He's way back there. The little owl, you can just see his fluffy face. And that was sent to me for free from Little Blue Artworks. I totally appreciated it. It's fun. It gives me content. I don't want paid to do the review. I want to give you an honest review. No, rant. Off, <laughs> off topic rant. Um, Tobias, it's so hard getting the iron transfer pens here in Brisbane, Australia. Oh. Um, I've not seen them in any shops. I just ordered them off eBay. Um, so maybe that's an idea. Oh, and I have heard, I'm going to have to check into it, but Nerdy Crafter has been talking about that Amazon China, now this is probably going to get shut down quickly because, yeah, we know about racism and everything, but Amazon China has opened up to worldwide shipping. So crafty things no, not China, Japan. Yes, crafty Japanese kits and everything, Japanese tools and all that, all that goodness are open to us at hopefully not as exorbitant prices and everything as they were. Um, yay. Alicia, where are we up to next week, the sea otter? Uh, probably, I missed my maker's monthly subscription box getting delivered yesterday, so I'm going to have to go to the post office and pick it up. Um, Faith, it's beautiful. Thank you so much. Eileen, hello there. Another wonderful YouTuber. You guys want to check out Eileen if you're wanting to get get set up with us. She's awesome. I, I think pretty much at the when I started all this, Eileen was kicking about as well. We've all come up sort of together, which is cool. Oh, Scully, thank you so much. It's official. You're now one of my favourite artists. Oh, thank you so much. I make I make a lot of mistakes. I'm I'm not that great, but it's fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alicia's made four acorns so far. In the time that I've made one, I was gonna say teeny eye, one giant face-sized eye. For anyone who's joining, this is what we've made. So if you want to get the replay to figure out how to do this promise you it looks more complicated than it is everyone everyone in the chat let anyone new know that was super easy um <laughs> faith and add the magnetic lash lashes to finish <laughs> brilliant idea um a Rosani on a pillow so many possibilities with your piece i may give it a go myself but you totally have to Rosani. yeah that's yeah, that's true. I could do your pumpkin, creepy punk, pumpkin y thingy in 2D. I was thinking of doing 3D, but could do a bit more 2D. That's a good idea. Um, Deborah, yeah, you feel the same way with ease and grace the way forward. That's lovely. Um, Scully, yeah, as long as you don't cut off your ear. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, everybody needs some money to live and some level yeah finding a way to make some money like i mean for certain i as soon well as soon as i was able i was able to monetize this youtube channel right from the get-go because i had this this channel like for a long time for those that don't know you need now 1000 subscribers and 4000 hours of watch time but thankfully i was grandfathered in i had i had I had I was monetized before that came up and thankfully I had I just met the requirements when the cutoff for the change 
so I've always been monetized. So absolutely, I monetized my YouTube channel. But at the same time, as we talked about last week, I try. If, if ads are coming up in the live streams, let me know. So I, I don't mind. I I can put ads in at the start of the live stream, at the start of a video, and at the end of the video. But I don't want ads in the middle of a video. So let me know if you ever see that on point to the video that it's happening, and I can dive in and take them out because I don't. Yeah. So. I'm I'm getting some money. It's like I've I've started channel memberships and I think I think they're great fun, but I'm not going to do like the high value channel memberships as you as you'll see with with some of the guys here. Like Alicia has has my little dog sticker and and that's it. You get you get fun little stickers and emojis you can use in the chat for like I think it's like a dollar a month. Um I'm never going to bother doing the absolutely big channel memberships. Um Kiss my stained glass. Um, really? Some of the Japanese craft tools are so good. I have to look at that. Yeah, I keep meaning to have a look as well. But Nerdy Craft has mentioned it a couple of times because she looked. If you haven't watched her, go back like about 18 months, obviously when she could travel and everything. But she's done some tours of the craft shops in Japan. And we're talking like eight story craft shops. It's like, wow. <laughs> Uh, Alicia, you only watch for the hair and backdrop, matchy matchy. Absolutely. <laughs> just come here for the hair. <laughs> um, Lily, hello. I'm just focused on providing value. What will come will come. Absolutely. Again, love Lily's attitude and another another great YouTuber. For those who haven't noticed, Lily does wire wrapped jewelry tutorials. Awesome. And for not chasing money, Lily's super growing her channel. Um, Oh, Pamela, yeah, today's eye would make an interesting clutch pouch, pa clutch purse or patch pocket. How creepy. Yeah. Oh, what, what creepy things can I put an eye on? Yeah, I'm totally up for that now. That's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Did I? Let, let's, let's check a thing. In fact. <laughs> didn't stick too badly but remember anyone who's not done 2d felting before or 3d felting in fact but remember and lift your work there are some times that i have been felting and i've got so carried away in doing a bit and i stab and i stab and i stab and that it looks even more freaky when i take it off the thing doesn't it would it show up if i put it in the back somewhere just have a creepy eye watching over us that's kind of cool too <laughs> I'd get distracted so easily. Um, Alicia loves your dog stickers. Thank you so much. Yeah, they. Um, I I love seeing my dog stickers. You've got my Ben. Um, Alicia, my dad's the best person to watch YouTube videos. He falls asleep and then watches all the adverts, and it will just go by to the next video too. Yeah, I kind of do that quite a lot. I let them. I let videos run in the background when I'm doing something else and stuff. Um. Lily suddenly feeling the need to visit Japan. I would do it after taking out a massive bank loan. <laughs> but yeah, it looked so cool. I mean, there's an entire floor of like colouring pens, massive sections of the stickers and just everything. It's totally weird, um, but cool. What did I just click that I lost? Who knows? Um... <laughs> Scully, it was a great segue to my day. Thank you so much. Oh, awesome! And by the way, I am just finishing up, guys. So get the last of your your comments in, and then I will be saying goodbye and leaving you to get on with your day. Um, yeah, Scully, see you soon. But thank you so much for joining us. This has been cool. <laughs> Kiss my stained glass. ASMR. Yeah, I don't think my setup was good enough for ASMR, but hopefully you heard that. Oh, Pamela, incorporate this into a wet felted witch hat. That would be creepy. Um, I'm terrible at wet felting. So bad. So much hard work. <laughs> um, but yeah. And kiss my stained glass. Yes, you did. A ASMR is what it's called. Autumn something or other median response. Anyway, it's, it's for people who get reactions to noises like goosebumps and stuff from noises 
let's not say it doesn't happen for me and then I just immediately think of chalk on a blackboard doing that and yeah that that's a kind of bad version of it I think anyway guys I think I will leave you all to get on with your day um it's been awesome fun thank you so much um Deborah, love your chats, have a beautiful day, and you, thank you for joining me, um, Faith, thank you, and bye, okay guys, I'm gonna stop this, wave awkwardly for a couple of minutes, thank you so much for hanging out, and I'll see you next week, if not before in one of my videos, okay, bye.